Hi everyone, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to add more touches to the Barbarian X. So first we're gonna add chips and dents to the blade with the help of masking. And then I'm gonna teach you how to create an overall border for the axe. And then we're gonna add shadow to our game prop based from the main shapes that we can use from the artwork itself. Okay, and one way to create those chips and dents for the blade is to use the shape builder tool. So I'm just gonna show a sample, a quick sample here. And as you can see, I'm just creating a shape and we will be using this to trim off the shapes of the blade. So I'll just use the shape builder tool and as you can see, I'm just trimming away the details right here. This is one great way to create those worn out effects but as you can see, it is very destructive and we're actually removing parts of the blade. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use masking to achieve the same effect. So I'm just creating a similar shape right here and this will be our masking shape. And everything that will be covered with this will be seen and everything that is not covered will be masked so in effect this will give us the worn out effect that we're aiming for and we can actually fake chips and dents by using this method and I'm just gonna continue to create the masking shape right here and you can also set the transparency lower so that you can see the shape beneath it and you can draw more clearly then turn it back to 100% after you've created your shape you can also press D so that we can see the masking shape clearly and then I'm just going to select both and press Ctrl 7. And as you can see, we have now successfully masked areas of the blade. And I can say that this is the most non-destructive way of creating these types of effect for your game art. And if we try to duplicate the blade here, like so, and then press Ctrl Alt 7, we can release the mask again and you can see that the blade design is still there. So with this in mind, we can say that masking is really a great way and a non-destructive way in creating this type of effects for your game art. So I really urge you to practice and master this workflow and implement it in your game creation process and I assure you it will help you a lot in the long run. And then we're just gonna do the same for the wooden handle here. And again, everything inside this shape will be seen and everything not covered will be hidden or masked. So select both and press Ctrl 7 to mask the handle. And we've successfully created the same effect for the wooden handle. And in the next part, I'm gonna teach you how to create those overall border for your game art. And so that we can go back to specific progress in our creation, we can make it a habit to create duplicates of our game art so that we can easily return back to our progress. So right here, we have the previous version of our Barbarian Axe and we're just gonna use the basic shapes we've created so that we can combine them and use them to create the overall border of our axe. So go inside the handle and copy the base shape and paste it outside and do the same for the blade. Copy the base shape also and paste it outside. You can also get the basic shape from the tip here. Just be sure to copy the base shape and paste them outside of the artwork. And now that we have an exact copy of the base shapes, we're just gonna select them all and use the Pathfinder tool to combine them as one shape. And then we're just gonna offset this path, or in my case, I'm gonna press Ctrl Alt O because I have set a shortcut for it. And we're just gonna offset it by 8 pixels and then press OK. And you can just delete the base shape right here. And all we have to do is put the shape at the bottom of our layer and just change the color to a darker one since it's an overall border and as you can see we've successfully created the border for our barbarian X. and now i'm going to teach you how to add shadows to your game art using the same or similar steps that we've used to create the overall border okay so i was able to create the similar shape from a while ago and we're actually gonna use this shape right here as the shadow for our game art and what we can do is we can just put the shape again at the bottom of our layer and lessen the intensity or the opacity and just move it a few pixels down to finalize the artwork. And we have now created our first mobile game art. We were able to create game art just by knowing the basic concepts, the essential tools, and the workflows you need in order to get started. And I'd like for you to create your own game art and post them in the discussion board and we will be glad to take a look at them and provide feedback. 
and thank you also for taking up the course and following along with every lecture and I'd like to know that I'll be adding more sections and lectures to this course and I'm gonna teach you how to create interfaces, power-ups, backgrounds, game titles, and other elements you need to create your mobile game art. So I'd like to request that you provide a review or a rating for the course and I'm gonna use these reviews to make my course better and make sure that the upcoming lectures are tailor fitted for you guys. So if you can kindly leave a review, I'd really appreciate it and it's all gonna help us all to make this course the best mobile game art course in Udemy.